And I am done. I have created something that was not here previously. Um, well, yeah, I think that went pretty well. Uh, it took a while to figure some little kinks out, and as you can see, this guy didn't come out super great. Um, I think a lot of this is actually due to the fact that on the first run, the filament had to be fed from here to here and I don't know how to do that without just making it run so it missed you know however much of that there was at the beginning um, but I think it started to look really good towards the end um, his eye obviously isn't a hole straight through like it's supposed to be and I noticed at one point he kind of got misaligned here on the x-axis I don't know if you can see that it has got a little dip in his tail there. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Well, anyway. Um, I could hear the the bed here kind of slamming into the end stop, so I don't know what that was all about. I don't know if that was a programming error or, or what. But um, there's my Mr. Jaws. It's pretty hard. probably snap this bit off and this is the first layer it kind of isn't great but um yeah there he is so yeah i'm looking forward to making some more stuff with this this was pretty fun oh i'll show you this real quick so this was my problem for a while um I had the fan here, you can, since there's this spring here, you can pull this down and slide it back. And that's how I had it, because that's just how it was built, and I didn't see anything that said to slide, snap it down in there, so I didn't do it. Um, after a while, I realized I needed to do it, and you can see it fits in there really nicely, so it was pretty clear that needed to happen. Basically, there's a bearing on this piece that butts up against the motor's... Um, sort of threaded nut, I don't know what you call it, but um, so they press together and when the motor spins it pulls down the filament that's caught in between there and since it wasn't butted up against there tight it was just loose and so the motor would spin and it would just rub against the filament so it wasn't pulling the filament down so I was having the printer just run and have nothing come out um, so I fixed that, and it also puts this fan down here nicely, so this fan spins when the printer's going. Um, I've also put some tape down on the bed, and now one thing I'll say about the bed is... Um, well, so I switched out this screw here. This is, the end, this is the Z end stop screw. And I switched it out with the three inch one. I, I think I mentioned how I had two, or I had one three inch and one two and a half, and in the instructions, both times it called out to use this 632 screw, it said use two and a half inch. Um, well, it, even with it screwed all the way down, this thing recognizes where it is by going all the way down until it hits the end stop and then sort of backing off a little bit and it says, okay, now I'm at home position now, and it does that with all three axes. So this was going down so far, the screw wasn't long enough, it was going down, this thing was smashing into the bed, and then this would kind of torque down even further, and then it would hit the end stop and then come up, and this thing would still be sort of embedded in the bed. And I actually scraped, scratched the bed a little bit, which I'm not too happy about, but not too bad. Um, but yeah, so that, that was not working. So I switched that out with the three inch one, so I can, and I can adjust basically by screwing that in more or less where uh, it recognizes the the bottom to be so you know I would there's a little home button on the software that you can hit and it'll drive it down to home and I can kind of adjust uh, where that is and I think I even maybe still did it a little too low although it didn't the first time I did this it actually dug up the tape because it was just grinding into it and it was and it was hot you know it's 200 degrees Celsius when you run it so it was like melting it and dragging it along and that wasn't working out, but um, 
I got that fixed with the three inch one. So if you're watching this and you want to make one of these, use a three inch screw right here, not a two and a half like it calls out in the instructions. Um, I did go buy another two and a half, although now that I just swapped that one out, I guess I could have done that in the first place. It was easier than I thought it'd be. But I did go buy another two and a half to use here, which I think is good. I think if you had the wrong size here, you'd have some trouble because it basically wouldn't activate this spring and it wouldn't be tight like it is and it wouldn't draw the filament in. Um, what else? I was a little worried about these uh, fishing lines or I guess they're not fishing lines, they're just rope. Uh, they're string. And um, I was a little worried about those because you have to get them super taut and that was where it said in the instructions, you know, it's helpful to have three hands. I only have two, and I didn't have anyone that came over to help me, because I'm lonely. But anyway, um, so one thing that I noticed as I was moving it around, which I don't want to do right now, but um, is I would pull it back and forth, and one side would go um, slack. And so that was bad, because then you basically have a little play in there, a um, little hysteresis, you might call it. Um, so I thought that could cause some misalignment issues, although looking at this guy, I think it, I think it didn't. I mean, this guy's not perfect, but I think if that was causing a problem, he'd look even worse than this. So I don't think that was an issue, I, and I think this is pretty tight on both ends. So, yeah. And uh, this, I was worried about this x-axis being too tight or something, but it was smooth as butter, so smooth as silk, soft as butter, smooth as silk. And yeah, I guess that's it. I did have a lot of trouble getting the software to work properly. I'll have to keep looking into that, but basically it was, so you go, maybe I can show you, you can go here where it says heat extruder and then you click that and you see it's got the current temperature and the temperature it's set to. So I would click that, wait for it to heat up, and then I would click run job and it would do nothing. And um, eventually I figured out it's because if you go to the, so you can set like the default, uh, this software isn't great, I guess it is free, but you can set the default temperature somewhere in, in the options here, these printer settings, but then you can also do it here with the slicer. And what the slicer does is it takes your 3D model and slices it into layers that the printer can read. So if you go in here, you can, if you go into the configure here, you can set default temperature settings there as well. And it was running into a conflict there where I had, the, I had this set to like 200, but then the slicer was set to 205. So it would set it to 205, but it wouldn't actually drive it to 205, and it would just be waiting for the temperatures to equalize, to match up, which never happened because it wasn't actually doing that. So it just wouldn't start. And I had, and then it would like crash, like I couldn't turn it off. And if I tried to close it, it would say, oh, the heater's still on, do you want to turn it off? I'd say yes, and it would do nothing. So the only way to fix it was to unplug it. Um, and then I guess it just stopped doing that. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, eventually I went into the slicer and just set it to the same temperature that I have here, which is 195 and zero. And I had to hit okay, like many times over, because when I would hit okay, it would just revert back to what it was before. So that was kind of weird, but eventually it, it accepted my inputs. Um, what else? Yeah, you can kind of play around with this manual control here to make sure everything's working. So that's what I was kind of doing a little bit. I don't know if it'll work right now. I kind of don't want to do anything with it. I guess I'm paranoid, but oh, I just moved it anyway <laughs> on accident. But yeah, so you can, so I can hit the 10, I'll go 10 millimeters up. And yeah, so the Z axis goes pretty slow, but these these other axes are pretty quick, so I can do, so it's at, it says it's at 130 right now, so I go minus 10 on the x-axis, that'll move to bed. That's pretty fun, and then the y-axis is at zero, so we'll go up 10. Yeah, good times. So, yeah. Um,
there we go. I got a 3D print. How awesome is that? Uh, I think I can feel my phone heating up pretty bad right now, so I guess I'm going to cut this video off, and thanks for watching.